Hey, what's up? It's 98 degrees in St. Louis today. And that means that it's so hot that I'm wearing shorts and my air conditioner hasn't turned off in like three days. Hang in there, dude. When it's this hot outside, I really, really don't wanna turn up my oven or turn on my stove because it will turn my nice, cool house into a stinky, sweaty one. But I really wanna make pizza. How do I solve this problem? Well, today I'm gonna to show you an easy way to make a pizza that has an unbelievably dynamic texture and flavor without turning on your oven. And no, you don't need a fancy outdoor pizza oven, if that's what you're thinking, but this recipe does require a tool that I think most of you guys already have. But we'll get to that in just a second. To get started, we'll need to make some pizza dough. For that, into my stand mixer, I'll combine 400 grams of warm water, six grams of instant yeast, 12 grams of salt, 20 grams of sugar, 20 grams of olive oil, and 690 grams of bread flour. Now the dough hook goes on and I'll mix this on medium speed for eight minutes. Since there's such a high volume of dough in the bowl right now, I'm not throwing it up to high speed like I normally would because it would push my mixer's motor just a little bit too far. And after eight minutes, this dough should be well combined and fully clearing the bowl. So I'll stop the mixer and give it a quick quick tug. And I feel like I say this a lot, but you guys know the drill. No tearing, no shearing. It's good to go. She's sturdy. Now, right away, I'll flip this mixed dough out of the mixing bowl and then divide it into four 275 gram sized pieces. From there, I'll shape this dough into pizza balls by pushing down to flatten, pulling out and folding over each side. Then I'll roll over the top of the dough and flip it onto those folded seams. From there, I'll roll the dough to bring in some additional tension and strength. Make sure to use your fingertips to get the dough nice and tucked up underneath. That little bit of tension goes a long way in creating a well-risen, strong pizza crust. And that looks good. Now, all four doughs are gonna go onto a lightly oiled sheet tray, and then that will get covered with a lid or plastic wrap. I'll ferment these at room temperature for 30 minutes to give the little yeasties inside some time to wake up before I throw them in the fridge overnight. And after 30 minutes of fermentation, these dough balls have grown just a bit, and they've got a little bit of fermentation momentum to carry with them into the next step, which will happen in the fridge. I'll just scoot them over there and then ferment them for as little as eight, but preferably 24 hours. The next day, 90 minutes before my pizza party, I'll pull out my dough. I need to let it proof up a little bit more so that it springs while baking, and I also need to let it come up to room temperature. Next, about 30 minutes before we want to make this pizza, we'll need to preheat our non-oven pizza cooking surface. So for that, I'll head outside. So if you haven't figured it out already, the secret tool that we're using to cook this pizza is a grill. But there's a few caveats I wanna mention when it comes to setting up a grill for cooking pizza properly. Number one is you need to make sure that your pizza grill, your grill has thick, well-seasoned grates. If it doesn't have this, then your pizza's gonna kinda sag through the grates and get stuck, and that's gonna be a huge problem. Number two is you wanna make sure that you're setting up three distinctive temperature zones. We're going with low heat on the left here, medium heat in the middle, and high heat on the right. That high heat burner on the right is gonna kinda help us set the temperature of the overall grill, which needs to be about 450F, by the way. And it's gonna help replicate some of the convection that happens in a conventional oven. And the third thing I wanna mention is the temperature gradient between the bottom and top of the pizza is quite extreme compared to a regular oven. The bottom of the pizza on the grill is gonna get about 75% of the heat, and so it can burn pretty easily. Make sure you're dropping your pizza on the low side of the grill so that it doesn't burn. Cut to some B-roll of me burning a pizza real bad over high heat. Don't do that. Back inside after 90 minutes at room temperature, these pizza doughs have just about doubled in size and they're no longer cold so they're ready to shape. But before we build this pizza, we'll need to do some quick prep on the toppings. And in my opinion, this pizza is gonna share some of the high temp rustic aesthetics of a wood-fired pizza like Neapolitan. So we're gonna start with that style's baseline pizza, the margarita. That'll show you the dynamics of how this pizza works. First, the cheese. I've got a ball of standard issue fresh mozzarella here. No fancy buffalo milk mozz because the top of this pizza won't get nearly as hot as is needed to evaporate the amount of milky juice in buff milk mozz. Now, to get this cheese into a form factor suited for this unique cooking environment, I'm gonna grab my box grater and rip it down into something that resembles a grated cheese. But this mozz is too soft to really catch a traditional grate, so it'll end up being more of a crumbled fresh mozzarella. In total, we'll need about a pound of grated mozzarella for four pizzas. Now, I'll set some aside and then save the rest for the other two pizzas that I'm gonna show you in just a second. Next, let's talk sauce. Again, this pizza isn't gonna get the intense intensity of heat on top that we're used to, and that means less evaporation during the cook. So we need to start with a thicker sauce. To make it, I'll drop a bowl on my scale, 
tear it out, then measure in 325 grams of a nice tasting crushed tomato. Not sponsored, but for me, that basically means Bianco di Napoli. Then one whole little can of tomato paste. That's about 175 grams, then five grams of salt and 10 grams of sugar. I'll just give that a stir to combine instead of a puree to keep the slightly more coarse rustic texture of these crushed tomatoes. And there we go, a nice thick sauce that doesn't require me to turn on my stove and heat up the house. <laughs> I like that. Now, let's build some pizza. Step one is gonna be to carefully lift one of these pizza balls off of my sheet tray. I'll make sure it's well floured and then I'll do that with my dough scraper and then I'll drop it onto a well floured cutting board. Next, I'll give the top a generous dusting of flour. Then I'll use the flat of my hand to flatten this ball a little bit. This will help pop any large bubbles. And then next, I'll grab my rolling pin and roll out the dough. This step is super easy, you guys. Just keep things well floured and roll it into a decently round 10 to 12 inch circle. That 90 minute post fridge proof should have warmed up the dough plenty to make stretching it no sweat. And once the dough is rolled out into a 12 inch round like this, I'll grab my pizza loading peel, douse it with fine semolina flour, then I'll drop the dough. First thing down is my thick no cook pizza sauce. I'm gonna try to spread that out as close to the edge as I can get it, but I'll need to be careful because if the sauce runs off while we're cooking it, the grill will flare up and that will prematurely char the crust. And once the sauce is down, I'll drop on my crumbled fresh mozzarella. I'm putting down about 125 grams or maybe just over a cup of the stuff that we grated earlier. Next, I'll drop on eight to 10 leaves of stem-free fresh basil. Then I'll give each leaf of basil a little squiggy of olive oil to make sure that it fries on the grill instead of steams. Then lastly, I'll give this pizza a strong pinch of flaky salt to season it up. Reg salt would also work fine, but the chunky nature of the flake salt really makes the experience of this pizza a lot more dynamic. Okay, that's a pretty looking pizza. I'll just give it a quick shimmy to make sure that it's not stuck to the peel and it is on the front right here. So I'll hit that with a little bit more semolina flour to make certain that this pizza slides off and then I'll move it outside. Out at the grill, I'll spray the cooler side liberally with olive oil pan spray. Don't be shy because stuck pizza is very bad. Then I'll carefully load on my pizza. I'll do that as cleanly as I can trying to maintain a round shape. Then I'll let the bottom get to grilling close the lid and check back in two minutes. Two minutes later, I'm gonna come back and check the bottom of the pizza to make sure that it's not stuck to the grill and make sure that it's not burning. The bottom of this pizza looks sick. It's well set and is taken on some nice grill marks. So I'll rotate it 90 degrees and then keep on cooking for another three to four minutes, lid down. And after about six to seven minutes of grill time, this pizza is looking really good. As you can see, the bottom is charred and full of grill marks, but it's not burning. Burnt. One thing that I'll mention about this pizza is because of the high heat bottom, low heat top situation, this is kind of the best color that you can get on the cheese. It won't take on too much browning, but I think it's a worthy trade-off because the bottom of this pizza is honestly so freaking sick. It's not just crispy, it's crunchy. Oh, and the flavor of this pizza, you guys, is so unique. You get that char grilled experience from the crust mm. alongside the pungent sweet basil and some milky melty fresh mozzarella. The top of the crust is bready and light and soft, kind of like a Neapolitan, but the bottom is crunchy and crispy like the best of the bar style thin crust pizzas. Bro, that texture is just unreal. And that crispiness endures. This slice right here sat mm. for two hours. That's two hours old. Still crisp. Think about the leftovers potential. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, that's how you make the margarita on the grill. Next, I'm gonna take what we learned there and apply it to two more topping combos that are perfect for this rustic summertime pizza. But first, I'm gonna thank Factor for sponsoring this video. Factor delivers fresh, never frozen meals to your door. And if you're about to throw down in the comments, hey Bri, you're a chef, why would you ever order pre-cooked food off the internet? Well. I work a lot and I often don't have time to stock the fridge with fresh food, let alone cook a nice meal and do a bunch of dishes. So especially on nights when I'm working late, I unapologetically grab a factor. One thing that I think is great about factor is that if you're watching calories, they have dietitian approved calorie smart meals with less than 550 cals per serving. And the macros are right here on the package if you're keeping track in an app. Right now though, I'm more of a protein muscle guy. So I'm going for the protein plus meals, which all 
all have 30 grams of protein or more per serving. Go stock your fridge with some factors. You're going to like it. Head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code Lagerstrom50 to get 50% off your first factor box. Up next, we're going to make a grill roasted cherry tomato pizza. To build it onto a stretched out pizza skin, I'll add some full fat shredded mozzarella, about a cup's worth. Then I'll drop about 12 to 14 cubes of fresh mozzarella. Keep the chunk size small here because otherwise they won't melt. I'm skipping the grated fresh mozzarella from Pizza One because I want that juicy, milky, barely melted quality on this one. That's part of what makes it special. Next, I'll drop on some of those grill roasted cherry tomatoes that I mentioned a second ago. To make them, I just dropped about a half pint or so into a medium bowl, then topped with salt, olive oil, and some fresh cracked black pepper. Then I'll drop them onto the hot side of my grill and cook them until they're blistered and barely softened for about two or three minutes. Do not overcook these tomatoes. We don't want tomato mush. We just want them blistered and a little bit jammy on the inside. Once they've cooled a little bit, I'll put about 15 to 20 pieces on this pizza. Next, I'll drop about a dozen leaves of fresh basil, then a big grip of grated Parmesan cheese. I'll give this a sprinkle of chili flake, a sprinkle of dried oregano, and then a bunch of slices of marinated fresh garlic. By marinated, I mean this garlic was sliced thin and then covered with a bunch of olive oil to keep it from burning on the pizza. This olive oil garlic is one of my favorite low-key pizza toppings, and I highly recommend it for any time you're gonna be dressing a pizza. I'll make sure to get a bunch of that garlicky olive oil on the top of this pizza as well. And then finally, a strong pinch of flaky salt. Next, I'll just give this pizza a quick rip on the medium low side of this grill for about seven to eight minutes, just like we did for the Marg. And after about seven minutes in total, the bottom is grilled and the top is melty. Time to bring it inside. Once indoors, I'll finish with a few cranks of fresh cracked black pepper. And oh baby, look at this pizza. That's summer right there. It's milky, sweet, and full of jammy, roasty tomato flavor. The juicy, soft-ish melt on that chunky fresh mozzarella pairs famously with that deeply crunchy crust. This pizza has a mix of flavors and textures that you just can't get in a restaurant. It's grilled. You guys, don't end your summer without trying this pizza. Mm. My God. Seriously, that is f dope. <laughs> Lastly, I'm gonna show you guys another grilled vegetable pizza, but this time it's green. To make it, I'll take a bunch of broccolini and toss it in a bowl with some salt, cracked pepper, and olive oil. Then I'll throw that onto a ripping hot grill to get it charred up on every side. That'll take about three to four minutes. We wanna cook this about 65 to 75% of the way. And once I'm there, I'm gonna move it off the grill and throw it into a bowl, then cover with a lid. This will steam the broccolini a little bit and give it a very gentle carryover cook. It'll make it a little bit more tender, but not mushy. And after five minutes of steaming in the bowl, we'll just slice this broccolini into small chunks that will nicely fit on top of a pizza. Now to build this thing, I'll drop about a cup of my full fat aged mozzarella cheese, then about a cup of that grated fresh mozzarella from the first pizza. Next, I'll drop on my grilled broccolini. Usually one whole bunch per pizza is what I go for, or about a half cup, and I just spread that evenly from edge to edge. Next, I'll drop on some chopped anchovies. These are salted anchovies, and I just chop them down into small-ish pieces like this. If you don't like anchovies, use capers. Next, I'll drop down a bunch of the sliced garlic from the last pizza. Be liberal with that. Make sure to get at least 25 slices and get a bunch of that garlicky oil all over the top. Next, I'll drop on some chopped Calabrian chilies. The combination of broccoli, garlic, fruity chili, and funky anchovy is one of my favorite. If you like it as much as I do, check out this early video for an anchovy pasta using the same combination. It's a bad video, but an amazing recipe. Now I'll drop this pizza on the grill and cook it for seven to eight minutes. And once the bottom is grilled up and the top is melty, I'll bring it inside. Wow, this pizza looks fresh and somehow aggressive. Plus it smells so good. Like what? It smells like a pizza form of your anchovy pasta. The grilled broccoli here is meaty, it's tender, and a little bit snappy. The spicy aromatic chilies bring just a tiny bit of tingle on your tongue, but also like a whisper of pain. And again, I just can't get over the textural dynamic at play on this style of pizza. It's soft and chewy on top, but relentlessly crunchy on the bottom. And that crunch tastes like the grill. Ooh. Oh my God. Before developing this recipe, cooking pizza outdoors meant struggling with one of those internet brand pizza ovens that 
I kind of hate. Those tiny pizza oven pizzas need a lot of attention. They're hard to get right. And the pizza that they're designed to make is not my favorite style by a long shot. They're too soft. This grilled pizza, on the other hand, is a five out of 10 on the difficulty scale at most, and the outcome is undeniably insanely good. Plus, it's made with a tool that the vast majority of home cooks watching this video already own. But what do you guys think? Am I crazy for preferring a pizza grill to a pizza oven? Let me know down in the comments and please try this recipe soon and report back. Let's eat this thing.